Sever, the case of a former member of a Joliet motorcycle club who has been charged with killing his girlfriend has lingered for more than a year and a half. As his attorneys try to gather evidence that they argue may show the woman died by suicide. Jeremy Boshears, 34, has been in the Will County Jail since November 18, 2017 and faces charges of first degree murder and concealment of a homicide in connection with the death of a 24-year-old bartender, Katie Kearns. Boshears had pled not guilty to the charges. Kearns was reported missing November 14, 2017. She was last seen at Woody's Bar in Joliet Township where she worked. Kearns' body was later found by Will County Sheriff's Office detectives in the back of her 96 Grand Cherokee, which was parked inside a pole barn in Aroma Park Township in Kankakee County, according to the Will County Sheriff's Office. She was killed by a single gunshot wound to her head. Bo Shears, a former member of the Joliet Outlaws Club, was charged with killing her at the Outlaws Clubhouse, which is down the street from Woody's Bar. Yeah, I don't believe that. However, one of his attorneys, Charles Brett, said that Kearns may have taken her own life. On May 30, Will County judge granted a motion from Brett's associate, Neil Patel, to have experts with Larson Forensic and Associates reconstruct the crime scene and review evidence to determine whether her gunshot wound was self-inflicted. Brett said he was waiting on those experts to deliver the reports. He said he expects the case will go to trial. Quote, I expect it to go to trial at some point. At this point, I don't have a realistic handle on when, Brett said. Will County Deputy Chief Dan Jungles has rejected the idea that Kearns died by suicide, saying the sheriff's office investigation was able to prove she was murdered and there was no suicide here. How do you know? Jungles questioned how her death could be a suicide if the body had been disposed of in another county and why the crime scene was covered up. It's because nobody in their right mind would do it in a clubhouse. When asked about Boshier's attorney's argument that Kern's death may be a suicide, Will County State's attorney spokesman Carol Cheney referred to the indictment against him. Quote, Any response to a particular theory will be made at the appropriate time, in court, Cheney said. Attempts to reach Kern's family were unsuccessful. In Patel's motion for the appointment of forensic expert, he argues that records obtained from Silver Cross Hospital and a mental health treatment provider may suggest her death could have been a suicide. Patel's motion argued the records show she went to an emergency room for a laceration on her wrists, that she struggled with high levels of anxiety and depression, that she had a history of self-harm, and that she engaged in reckless behavior. That is huge right there. His motion further argued that there were no eyewitnesses that implicated Boshears as the shooter, no forensics indicating he was the shooter, and that Bo Shears was recorded telling his wife after being arrested that Kearns died by suicide. His motion said a good faith argument exists that Kearns took her own life either accidentally or purposely. A supporter of the Joliet House laws who asked not to be identified said he didn't believe Bo Shears would kill somebody at the clubhouse. I agree. How stupid do you have to be to kill someone in the clubhouse? That's something you don't do because that brings heat down on the club, he said. I gotta agree right there. I do not see this happening in a clubhouse. Vicky Hopes, the son of a former Hells Angel member who was gunned down outside his Vancouver home, in 2010 is one of the two men recently sentenced for a three-week crime spree two years ago that stretched from Sur Surrey to Abbotsford. 
Dylan Jewel Stannon, 29, was sentenced July 4th in B.C. Supreme Court in New Westminster, along with co-accused Leonard Rick Travis, 22. The judge's written ruling was not posted online until last week. Both have been in custody since their arrest in March 2017, and each was sentenced to an additional jail term of seven years and five months. Stannon and Travis both previously pled guilty to several offenses, including robbery, using an imitation firearm, assault causing bodily harm, and possession of a restricted firearm. Stadden is the son of Jewel Stadden, who was killed August 12, 2010, at the age of 41. He had been expelled from the Hells Angels earlier that year, according to media reports at the time. Police announced on March 28, uh, 17, that Stadden and Travis had been arrested for a series of commercial robberies and break-ins that occurred between Feb 20 and March 13th of that year throughout the more, uh, lower mainland. They initially faced a total of 22 charges, but seven were later added. Mounties at the time said they had recovered a replica handgun during the pair's arrest. They subsequently searched a storage locker room and found property that had been stolen in several break-ins. Police said they also recovered 13 firearms, at least four of which had illegal modifications, including filed off serial numbers. They also seized cigarettes, vaping supplies, video games, gaming consoles, laptop computers, lottery tickets, and other items. The crime spree involved seven different areas. Coquelum, Burnaby, Surrey, Langley, Port Coquelum, Epsburg and Mission. In one of the robberies on March 12, 2017, at a hemp store in the port, the pair uh, zap strapped an employee's hands behind his back and had him lie down on the floor. When the man got into a struggle with Travis, Travis removed an imitation gun from his pocket and hit the man in the head. The employee suffered a concussion and later received staples for his head wound. In a robbery at a convenience store in Stanton, Carden, Car or Stanton carried a hockey stick which he used to strike an employee when she hit him with a stick. The last robbery of the Paris crime spree took place in Abbotsford where they targeted a convenience store in the 32,000 block of Marshall Road. According to court documents, Travis entered the store first wearing a toque and a scarf covering his face. He pulled a fake gun out of his pocket and pointed it at an employee. Stratton then entered the store also with his face covered and carrying a duffel bag. The pair filled the bag with items that included almost 1,500 lottery tickets, 90 packages, of cigarettes, a thousand in cash, and a cash register. Huh. They fled in a GMC terrain rental vehicle, which police later located that day in Langley, while the pair were each validating lottery tickets at two gas stations that were close together. Three of the guns that turned up in the, sub uh, the search of the storage locker had been stolen from a home in Mission, on March 8, 2017, according to the court documents. In his ruling, Justice James Williams stated that Stanton and Travis were close friends at the time of their offenses and both were in the midst of serious drug addictions. Quote, they went on what could fairly be described as an outrageous crime spree to support those dependencies, Williams said. There is no question that the experiences that the victims went through in the course of those robberies were terrifying. Man, nine news out of Australia. The leader of an Australian outlaw motorcycle gang, Mick Murray, was turned around at the border in Thailand despite his bail conditions allowing him to leave Australia for travel. The common Cheryl Bikey Gang president, facing more than 100 fraud charges, had his bail 
Conditions varied by the Melbourne Magistrates Court last Wednesday, so he could travel to Thailand and Dubai. Murray flew to Thailand on Thursday night, where he had planned to spend five nights before a 10-day holiday in Dubai. But he arrived back at Melbourne Airport on a Thai Airways flight about noon on Saturday after Thai authorities turned him around at the airport in Bangkok. Among other charges, he is accused of having associates falsify a loan application to a car leasing company on his behalf and allegedly owes the Australian Taxation Office $1 million. Although police failed to have the changes to this bail halted, Mick will have to stay put in Australia for the time being, arriving back at Melbourne's airport on Saturday. A spokeswoman for the Victoria Police says that the man had been refused entry into Thailand. This is a matter for the Thai authorities. Now on to some motorcycle rally news. October 23rd through the 27th, the 19th annual Thunder Panama City Beach, Florida. There's going to be a huge rally, the most biker-friendly free rally in the USA, it claims. Again, October 27th, or 23rd through the 27th. And then we got the Route 66 Fall Rally, last big biker party of the year, October 3rd through the 6th in Depew, Oklahoma. Bike and people games, wild contests, live bands, pool bar, vendors swimming, and on-site camping and more. More upcoming Route 66 rallies, children's Halloween party on October 26th. 